Hey, our next guest is the last, it is the, uh, I think the last point guard to start all 133 games of his BYU career. And, and maybe the only ever to actually do that as we move forward. Our pleasure to welcome TJ Haas to the Wise Guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Got that mic situated. We've been waiting a long time to have you here in yes, studio. Yes, he's here. You've been with us in our BYU TV studio. Now you're in the Wise Guys studio. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to be here. I, I felt like TJ had the best debut of anybody knew we've ever brought on any of those shows. On our pregame show? Yeah, he came yeah. on the pregame show and it's like, oh, this dude belongs. He, he basically started every game on TV with us so far, too. This is his second TV game. And he's, you know, or live stream game. And he started every game there, too. We had a lot of Haas on the left side of the desk. Yes, we did. Because Tyler was there, too. <laughs> but uh, two guys who've scored a lot of points at BYU, won a lot of games. And uh, was that a nerve-wracking moment for you to be a TV analyst? Um, yeah, I think I had some nerves, you know, coming up to it. But uh, it was fun talking with you guys. It was fun being on with Tyler. And You know how I could tell you were nervous? Your ear would twitch. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like going, uh, you know, it's, but, but you didn't sound nervous. That's uh, half the battle. Yeah, that's good. I know. Before every game, you always you always have nerves and stuff. But once the ball's tipped off, it's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and so I was hoping for that same feeling. I'm like, once we get going, hopefully I figure well, it out. Well, and, and what we're looking for on that is, hey, this is just four guys sitting there talking basketball. Exactly. Which is what it became. Exactly. And, and, and then it was just fun to mm -hmm. have you guys there. And it was fun to have you and Tyler together. It was really fun. Yeah, it was great. I was hoping we'd win. But yeah. <laughs> they've done they've, some good luck there. They've done their fair share of that this season, though, haven't they? For yeah. sure. It's been, it's been a blast to watch this team. Let's this jump year. into a bunch of this stuff. Uh, the bulletin stuff from today, the AP Top 25 has BYU number 20. Net rank still... Number 12, Ken Palm's number 16. Lunardi has him around a five seed, and the Big 12 tournament has him as a five seed. Uh, what number doesn't surprise you of that group? Um, that doesn't surprise yeah, me? Yeah, because considering three months ago, these were numbers weren't under consideration. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what number doesn't surprise me. I all I know right now is I'm really excited about all those numbers. And, uh, you know, I, I think. Right now, with how battle tested this team is, I feel like whatever spot we're put in, I'm comfortable with, and uh, I'm I'm really excited about this week in Kansas City, and I think uh, our, our I think our first game is going to be a, a really tough challenge. It's hard to beat, you know, UCF three times, and Oklahoma State plays us really well, right. and so. Uh, I, I think if we can get through that first game, we're going to, you know, I think we can make a little run. Um, but that first game is going to be a challenge. Look, before we go any further, that hat you got on, uh -huh. in a mirror, is the Cougars right side up and the Brigham Young is upside down? Or how does that work? I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> my my cousin, he, he has this, he runs this company and it's Wooden Grail and he's he's done a really good job. And if you, if you start to look for these hats, you'll see them all over the place, the okay. upside down. Wooden upside Grail. Down, wooden Grail. I'm looking over at you and I'm going, man, I've, I've been on a long You're road like trip and I'm like, like this. is that Cougars upside down? Yeah, I'm looking around the monitor to see if it looks different on the monitor, but it's still... <laughs> It still looks upside down. All right. Shout out to Wooden Grail. Wooden yeah, Grail. Wooden Grail. Right. Hey, Jackson Robinson, he's named the, the Big 12 six man of the year. Um, he's, he, he, coming off the bench all year. Does that surprise you, first of all, that he's he's come off the bench? Um, and what does that take for a guy with his talent level to be okay coming off the bench for a whole season like this? Yeah. You know, I think for someone like him... I don't feel like it's a hey. You're not you're not good enough to be in the starting five. We're gonna you know. I, I think there is a, a lot of strategy that goes into that. Bringing him off the bench brings a huge spark for this team. Yeah. And uh, you know he's he's done a really really good job all year of coming off the bench and just uh, helping this team get going. And obviously he can put the ball in the basket. Um, Seventy three and, pointers to yeah, lead well, the group. That that's yeah. a that's a fantastic number. And I, I think. You know what you really like about this team is everybody has just accepted their role, and everybody plays their role extremely well. And uh, Jackson does a great job of that. Also, he comes in and knows what he, what he what you know what they're asking him to do. And I don't feel like he's coming in going, "I should be this guy" or "I should be starting." Like he comes in and does his job and, and helps us win games and make shots. Yeah, and Dave's research. He he. We looked back, and Dave dug deep. 
This is only the second time a BYU player has won the sixth man of the year in any conference. Jonathan Tavernari is the last one. Really? In, in, in 9-10. And that's... Yeah. I, I was thinking back. I, I feel like we've had other really good six men, and you've followed it since you were little. Your dad played. Mm -hmm. um, Marty played back in the olden days. But that that's saying something, that we've only had two of them. And here in the Big 12, when he's the sixth man of the year in the Big 12, that's yeah. that's quite an accomplishment, really. Yeah. No, it, it's really sweet, especially in the Big 12. There's a lot of there's a lot of talented guys in this league. And yeah. to, to come in the first year and do it like that, that's, that's, that's really exciting. Honorable mention, all Big 12. Uh, Robinson, Dallin Hall, Fusini, Trey Ore, Spencer Johnson. Fus comes off the bench now in his new role uh, and yet still impacts how games go totally. like he did the other night against Oklahoma State. Kellen Sampson, the Big 12 Coach of the Year, was well-deserved. Uh, T.J. Otzelberger from Iowa State was probably right there in the mix, and you mm -hmm. could argue Mark Pope. Totally. I know to to in the preseason to be selected 13 and then – finish at five is is a huge accomplishment yeah. and um you know just just what he's done with this group of guys and you know the way that every single player is bought into his style and uh it's it's really special he definitely pope deserves to be in that conversation let's march through the uh, big 12 tournament you can tell us who you think is going to win yeah right. we'll, we'll do a pick them <laughs> let's do it yeah so we start we st start tuesday march 12th you already mentioned you know, that BYU awaits because they have a first round bye by being yep. in the first six as the five seed. But but uh, we're, we're talk starting tomorrow at the 1030 a.m. Mountain Time game is Oklahoma State and Central Florida. BYU play the winner. Oklahoma State's the 13 seed. Of course, BYU just played them the other night. Yep. Central Florida, the 12 seed. BYU, um, they swept Central Florida, surprisingly, with the mm -hmm. length. And, and Central Florida's had some good wins. They're the 12 seed. Who do you like in that matchup? And then, you know, they would face BYU the next day. Who do I like? That, you know, who do I like for our matchup? Yeah, who do you, well, yeah. Who do you think will win? And then who do you wish would win? Yeah, uh, I think UCF's going to win. I, I think they're going to get that done. Um, like I said, it's hard to beat a team three times in a year regardless of, you know, ranking or how many, how much you beat them by. It's just, it's just difficult to beat a team. And they, uh, and they got athletes that can give us trouble. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think UCF is going to win. Uh, but I, I think that game will be will be really good. All right, game two tomorrow, West Virginia. West Virginia took last place. That, that Bob Huggins departure fiasco, and I was just back there with baseball, mm -hmm. and they're still buzzing about it. Yeah, what a p gut punch before the season. Uh, so they take last place. They're the 14 seed. Cincinnati, who beat BYU in the opener, is the 11 seed. Who wins that one? Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati will get that done. Yeah. I wish okay. Cincinnati was on BYU side of the bracket because I feel like in the opener, BYU loses to Cincinnati. I don't think Cincinnati could beat BYU now. I agree. I don't think no. they could. They, BYU's figured themselves out since that kind of slow start to league play. And, and I think that Oklahoma State and UCF are better matchups than West Virginia or Cincinnati would be. So it's too bad BYU's on the other <laughs> on that side of the bracket because I think I think I, like you said, Central Florida is a tough matchup. So so then we get into Wednesday, and and on Wednesday, um, BYU versus Central Florida yep. if they win, like like you're saying, and uh, let, let's start with that one. What what's your thought on that? I think it's going to be a good game. Um, I I really believe honestly that BYU can beat anybody in the country. You know, after watching this team all year, I just think the style of play that we play, there hasn't been a game where we've, you know, a couple minutes in the game, I'm like, yeah, it's just, we're not good enough for this. Yeah. The way we play, we can beat anybody in the country. And, and that's really exciting. So, you know, that being said, we're, uh, we're going to come out and win. I think we're going to come out and we're going to have a lot of energy, a lot of fight, a lot of focus right out the gates. And um, I think we're going to, I think we're going to roll in that game. Get that central Florida game. All right. Game two on Wednesday, uh, the nine seed Sooners, eight seed TCU. Um, I think TCU comes out on top really? for that one. Okay. Yep. And then the five, five o'clock game mountain time. Of course, we're doing all things mountain time on ESPN plus. That's Kansas State and Texas. Kansas State is the 10 seed, Texas the 7 seed in that one. Mm. Have you guys made your predictions well, yet? Well, I, 
I like Kansas State's toughness, but I love Texas's guards. Yeah. And I think Texas can get that one on a neutral, neutral. I think Kansas State's really good at home, but I think Texas gets them on a neutral floor. Yeah. I know. It seems to me like Kansas State, they're kind of they're kind of up and down like this. They've had some, obviously, some really great wins. Uh, they beat Kansas. They beat Iowa State. You know, they're, they, they can do it. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm going to take Kansas State yeah. on that one. Okay. The, Kansas, Kansas State. State, to me, okay. they rough up the other team's guards. Like, mm-hmm. they're really physical. Yep. I feel like can't I feel like Texas's guards they're they're not the real long like they're they're more compact physical I think they hold up to that kind of pressure especially on a neutral I, I think they the, the Texas's guards hold up and they get that one so there we go he, so TJ's got Kansas State I got Texas in that one uh, and then the the nightcap at 7:30 is Baylor the three seed against the winner of Kansas West Virginia Cincinnati that's the other side of the bracket kind of Parallel to BYU's, where where Kansas is waiting for the West Virginia Cincinnati winner. Hey, wait! Um, you you hop today. You hop today. Oh crap! I went further. Kansas has to first beat West Cincinnati. Okay, let's do that one. Kansas, West Virginia, Cincinnati, which would lead to that game I'm talking yep. about on Thursday night. So, so Kansas versus West Virginia Cincinnati winner. You picked Cincinnati to win that one, mm-hmm. um, and then they have to face number six Kansas. So. Now, now remember, Dickinson just separated his shoulder. Yeah, has there they, has has there been anything haven't further heard, on that? I haven't see. heard anything. I haven't heard if he's playing but or not. if you separated your shoulder, for sure. I don't know how the next game out, your yeah. shoulder's fine. Yeah, but if, that, if, that's what they're dealing. On, with. I think it depends on what shoulder. Yeah. I'm still taking Kansas. Kansas? Okay. Yeah, I'm still right. taking Kansas. I'm with, you on that. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Thursday, March 14th, things get going now. The top four seeds are, are in play. Texas Tech is the four seed, and you've got BYU advancing to try and get them for the game that got away in Lubbock. How do you see that one going? I'm taking us again. It's, it's interesting because... We're not shocked by that. I've, yeah, I've, I've, okay. t- t- over the last, <laughs> but I really believe that. I'm yeah, not, I'm not that. just... I'm really taking us. O- over the last two days, TJ, I've read five different Big 12 previews. Nobody's even talking about Texas. I'm like, how are they not even talking about Texas Tech? They're the four seed. Everybody's saying the teams that have a chance to win this tournament are... And they go, Houston, who's the number one team in the country. Mm-hmm. They're talking about Iowa State with their phenomenal defense. And by the way, Houston and Iowa State are number one and two in the country in adjusted you know, defensive efficiency. That's crazy. That... Does defense win championships? We're going to find out, mm-hmm. right? Of course, Houston's really skilled. They're a top 30 offensive team, too. Um, Iowa State's not that gifted on offense. That's why I got Houston to win the whole thing. But Houston and Iowa State, and then they say, um, and then, of course, Kansas and BYU. And I'm like, they're not even talking about Texas Tech. They're, they're talking about can, te- can Kansas get their their form back? And then they talk about Baylor because Bay- Baylor's so skilled offensively. Like, Baylor's... The opposite of Iowa State, really skilled offensively, not so great defensively. Iowa State's really skilled defensively, not so great offensively. Yeah. Houston's everything. Mm-hmm. BYU is the second. BYU's top 15 all year long offensive efficiency, top 50 all year long defensive efficiency. So Houston and BYU are the two balanced teams. Got this phenomenal defensive team in Iowa State, this phenomenal offensive team in Baylor. And then you got Kansas that everybody's like, can they regain their great mm-hmm. form? nobody's talking about Texas Tech. Why is nobody talking about them? It's interesting because, you know, as I've been following all year, they've had some some big wins and some, like, close good losses. I think they lost at Baylor one week, and they dropped out of the rankings, and we dropped, like, one spot. We lost – I can't remember what game we lost that week, but we dropped one or two spots. And they dropped out of the rankings. They won at home against somebody and then lost it at Baylor, I think, and dropped out of the rankings. And I was like, man, they don't get it. And, you know, they, they just they just jumped into the rankings this week and they finished fourth. And Hey, they got that Pop Isaacs. And if he's going, yeah. he's going. Yeah. He got going against yeah, BYU in that, that second half. So uh, back to Thursday, the top seeds, Houston and uh, Iowa State. Houston would be like TCU. Uh, Iowa State would play Kansas State. You like the top seeds moving on? Yeah, top yeah. seeds for sure. Nothing yeah. there. That one. And now, now we get back to your Baylor question. Yeah, now, now we go back to that Baylor versus you got Kansas over West Virginia or Cincinnati. I do too. Mm-hmm. Um, so who gets that? Does Baylor, does Baylor the three seed prevail and beat Kansas? Yes. Yeah, Baylor's going to get that win. So you're going to have Baylor, Iowa State, Houston, and you got BYU beating Texas Tech, so, so that's your semifinals. Yeah, you got it's pretty good TV. Yeah, that's that's, that's a great, great semifinal mm-hmm. on on Friday, March fifteenth. In the first game, BYU side of the bracket, you, you got BYU um, going head to head with the number one team in the country, Houston. Who do you got? I 
I, I, I'm, I'm still going to go with BYU. You I think, think they're going to shoot it? Yeah, down I, and I just, I love, I love the way we played against those guys, yeah. and we didn't. I, I feel like we proved that we can have not our our greatest game offensively and going up against the best team in the country, and we lose, we lose by one. Had a shot. Yeah. Wide open three. I, and I just felt like it. BYU was the only team all year that made Houston not look like the number one defensive team in the country. Yeah, like we and like yeah. it, 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 BYU was effective mm-hmm. offensively. I, I like and got, and I got like great their looks. I like their chances too. Iowa State, Baylor, the second semifinal. Iowa State. Yeah, I'm gonna take Iowa State. Yeah. You do like the you like defense. I, I do think you know Baylor has a lot of experience in this and. Uh, but yeah, I think Iowa State. I think they're going to get it done. See, I don't know if BYU beats Houston, but I think they can beat Iowa State in the championship. Game. I agree. Yeah, I do too. Like I if agree. they get to if they get to the championship game, I would take them. I know that. Yeah, w- watching that game, you know, right out the gates against Iowa State, I'm like, man, we we play really well against these guys, and yeah. we were getting. Great That's a game they should have won on the road. They won't, and they they won't have the home. crowd. I they know. won't have the crowd at Kansas City, and and who Iowa State? You're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So, I've heard they travel really well for this. Yeah, but and they, they should. Iowa State has a great fan base. Yeah. As does Kansas, but they won't be the, like that home arena. Yeah, that's sure. yeah. that's sparkling. Yeah. Much like the the BYU arena. The, this is yep. yeah. This is such an interesting tournament. There's so many good teams. The, the crazy thing is, these teams could have as high or higher seedings in the NCAA tournament as they do in the Big Twelve. Tournament. I know it's crazy. And you're gonna have you're <laughs> seven, eight, possibly nine teams from this league. Eight almost for sure, right? Yeah. In the NCAA tournament. I think we have eight for sure right now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's it's wild. It's such a fun league. Former BYU point guard TJ Haas on the Wise Guys tonight started all 133 games at BYU between 2016 and 2020 uh, with the mission scattered in there as well. Let's go to the first game. November 14th, 2016, 20 points against Princeton. Nice first impression. Final start, March 3rd, 2020, against St. Mary's in the semis of the WCC tournament. With a lot of those games in between, uh, what, what, what did you enjoy the most of college basketball? Man, being at BYU is just such a special place. And I look back on my years, and I mean, even just before this show, I'm sitting here texting a bunch of guys that I used to play with, and and we talk all the time. And there's I, I just the relationships and uh, the friendships that I created here at BYU are are lifelong. And there's so many so many great memories. You, I mean, you talk about those two games, the fun start, a rough finish, yeah. and there's so many in between. Um, but I, I just feel like I'm so close with a lot of these guys and coaches that uh, I just think it's a special place that has special people. Do, do you have a best moment that stands out? I mean, that's a lot of games that you played. Is, is there is there something, not necessarily a game, but a moment where you're just like, oh, I'll remember that for the rest of my life? Yeah, there was I mean, the first one that popped in my head, as you said that, was uh, after we won at Houston. Uh, which we're going to do again this week. Not at Houston, but we're going to win. Beat him. You hit the buzzer shot. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. It had had a fun game, but we got in the locker room, and you just there was just a feeling that that team was different. Um, and I remember Jake Toulson getting up in front of our team, and he just gave like a five minute speech. And if you ask anybody on that team, any coach that was in that locker room, it was the greatest post game speech we'd ever heard. And it was just like we were all just so fired up and. If you ask Jake about it, he's like, I don't even remember what I said. Like I was just going on adrenaline and it was just, it was just a special moment that was like, you just really felt this team is special. It's a special group of guys and uh, it was, it's going to be a fun year. Well, sports gives us the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Uh, what, what's the worst? Oh, the worst. Um, I don't know. We, we talk about that a lot as players. It's like, basketball can give you the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. Like there's moments where that, that plane ride home after a game is just the worst feeling in the world. It's nobody's talking to each other. (laughs) It feels like, you know, the sky is falling and you know, the sun's not going to come up tomorrow and it's just, it's a terrible feeling, but it's what makes sports so great because the winds are, are the exact opposite. It's the highest of highs. So (laughs) is there, is there an absolute worst? Um, my, 
An absolute worst. My mine's easy, but that's it's not fair because mine's like the debacle. It's one of the worst losses in the history of college football. So right. anyhow, go ahead with yours. <laughs> there, there's a few that's coming to my mind. I mean, my freshman year at home against UVU was hard. My senior year against Utah was hard. Um, my junior year against San Diego was hard. Yeah. Um, again, I have a lot of great friends from that team, and that was kind of we felt that was the end and after that that was that was really hard uh just because you know in basketball you you can lose and the next day you show up and you turn the page and it's like let's go we're we're on to the next game um but that one was hard because it was like this is the end for us Mm. and a lot of tears in that locker room yeah it's it's a good thing that there's a lot more uh good than bad over the years especially especially in during your career when we had such great teams yeah, my, mine is, uh, in case people don't, we lost to UTEP. Like, we won a national championship. We hadn't lost in almost two years. UTEP, I'm not sure if they'd won in two years. It was so bad that <laughs> it made highlights it's, on the it's, NFL it's like today we, the next morning. We, we oh, went, and it was, like the, it was like the most, the biggest upset in the decade. Yeah. And, like, we sat in the locker room afterwards and were like, did we just lose to UTEP? Like, what just happened? Yeah, it, it was awful. So and my, you can't describe the feeling that no, like, nobody like gets I, it because it's like it's like we don't we're, like we're doing this every day happen? all how, day. How can we play this? But we still went on and got back into the top fifteen and played in the Citrus Bowl against Ohio State. But I remember that moment and thinking, this is like how is this even possible? <laughs> so mine's always easy. When everybody asks me your worst moment, I'm like, we lost to UTEP. Are you kidding me? It's not that hard. Uh, Yours is a little harder. You had so many great wins, but yeah. But there's uh, a lot more games too in basketball yeah, too. You know, yeah. But. So, well, TJ, we're, we're glad to have you. TJ is still the number seven all time leading scorer in BYU history, 1,899 points. Number three with 242 made threes. Number five all time with an assist average of 4.53. You kidding me? Career. And he's tied with Jimmer with 47 games of making three three point shots. Or more tied with Jimmer. That's pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah, right that, there. that's amazing. So, um, so, so after three straight appearances in tournaments other than the NCAA tournament, here comes the spring of 2020. You guys are 25 and eight. You talked about that being a special team mm-hmm. already. A number of folks on the national level were talking about this is a team that's built to get to a Final Four. I mean, we were all saying that. You could just feel the specialness of this team. And then COVID hits mm-hmm. and it shuts everything down. Um, where were you when you got the word that that there was going to be no NCAA tournament that year? No big dance. It's canceled. What was that like? And uh, and, and what did you do? Well, yeah, I can still remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, I remember being in the annex. We came back from the WCC tournament, and um, there were kind of rumors going around that there were going to be no fans at the tournament. And... We were all like, man, that would be the worst. No fans. Like, this is kind of what this is what it's all about. You're going to play in this random city, and there's, yeah. you know, a, a packed arena, and to have no fans seems like I don't know. It just was. It was a bummer. And looking back, I would, that would have been fine, you know. But then uh, we finished practice, and we went up in uh, our team room, and we were talking, and I think Pope got a text or saw a tweet or something, and. We had just finished practice. No one had their phones. And uh, I just remember Pope saying, guys, and it, it, the tournament's canceled. And there really wasn't anything else to be said. Mm. And we sat there for probably 10 or 15 minutes in complete silence. Nobody knew what to say. Nobody was, nobody was talking. It was just kind of like, is this real? Is this, is this really happening? Because all year we had had ups and downs and... We didn't lose in February, so we felt like you know yeah. we were we were really on the up and up and feeling like we're you know ready to make a run, like you said in the tournament. And for it to end like that was was really really hard and something that to this day I don't know if I've really like processed that. <laughs> um, I remember when I was with the the Magic in the G League, we went back to Vegas for a a tournament around Christmas and we were staying at the same hotel and we pulled up and I was like, Oh my gosh. Like all those feelings came back of like, we were at the, you know, the WCC tournament and that was kind of when everything got crazy. You'd heard there was a fan at our game against Gonzaga that had COVID or whatever. And it was, it kind of brought all those feelings back. And I was like, man, I really pushed these feelings out of my life (laughs) because it was just, it was such a hard thing because 
like I said, that team was so special and those guys were so much fun to be with. And we had just been through so much that year and, you know, just the daily grind and, and to have it kind of be ripped from us like that was, uh, was really hard. And, and, and it's different when you lose a game and it's over because that was in your control. But this mm-hmm. this was just like, whoa, wait a minute here. Comple- yeah. Completely out of our, our control and out of left field. Did you feel about that team like we all did that that you could beat anybody oh, yeah. and that you could be a Final Four team? Is yeah. that the feeling within the team at that time? Totally. Yeah, we, we you know, with Yoli inside that could score at will, it felt like, and, you know, we were shooting over 40% as a team from three. It was just pick your poison a little bit, and that's what we felt. And, you know, like I said, we hadn't lost in February, and we felt like we were really rolling. And, you know, it just – it we felt like we had figured it out a little bit, how to, how to be really effective and teams that were going to play Yoli one-on-one. We were good to just go to him. I yeah. think, you know, one of our last games was against Pepperdine and Yoli almost had 40 mm-hmm. and I remember it. It was like, just give him the ball. <laughs> if you're not going to double him, like we're just going to give him the ball and he's going to go to work. And, um, yeah, we, we really felt like, yeah, we, we can beat anybody. We're, you know, we, we shoot the three extremely well, and we have great inside presence, and we, we can do this. Mm. Now, your dad, Marty, played in three big dances. Uh, Tyler played in three. And you didn't get any. Do you, do you feel like any. you got robbed out of this whole thing? Yeah, that, that last one was rough because I felt like I was going to go farther than all those guys. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I was going to end up on top in the family. <laughs> so we can just imagine that was the case, you know. Well, you took us uh, right into that moment. It was very interesting. You did top the family in high school, four 5A state championships, a Max Preps national championship at Lone Peak, also named the Deseret News Mr. Basketball, and the Utah Gatorade Player of the Year in 2014. So there's that. Mm -hmm. You you got that. I have a little smack talk around the dinner (laughs) table. Yes, you got that. Hey, from from the chat, Richard Smirthwaite says, hey, hi from Panama. First of all, cool that he's in Panama. He says, Father, father-in-law to Dave and Marissa, friends of TJ's from his mission in Lyon. Yeah, the Smurthwaites. That's yeah, pretty that, fun. That's a that's a fantastic family. I have some great memories with that family out in Lyon. Nice connection, cool connections. Thanks, thanks for piping in, Richard. Hey, who wins the following competitions between you, your dad, and <laughs> Tyler? Since we're talking about one-upsmanship, yep. Uh, free throws, most without a miss. Who wins? Uh. Probably Ty. Ty would win that Is one. Is Tyler the best free throw shooter? He's he's probably shot the most free throws. Okay, all right. So we'll give it to Ty. He, he he told us that like what he used to do every day, and then we had Jim around, and Jim was like, "Well, yeah, I used to do the same thing, except for that I would stay until I missed." And one time I made 176 in a row or something <laughs> like that. We're like, "Oh, sorry." He said it with a, he said it with a little humility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. A game of pig. All three point shots. Me. Yeah, okay. I'm winning that game. You're winning a three point. Uh-huh. I don't shots. know if my dad can get it there. <laughs> <laughs> it's one to one. Uh, who's the most graceful winner? My dad. Yeah, actually, you know that's that's that might be a tough one. He. So I'll give you guys this. My dad. He played when I was growing up, getting to a point where I could start to play him in one on one a little bit. Yeah. We. You know, I well, getting serious. I'd finish a workout with him, and I'd be like rolling it out. Let's go! Come on. And he beat me when I was in seventh grade and hasn't played me since. Oh, it's like, like he, he was as, done. He as knew soon as it. He realized that, that <laughs> he that knew it could it. be iffy from this point forward. I'm out. Yeah. He, so he hasn't played me. So everybody that we talk about this to, he's like, yeah, ask him about the last time we played. It was like, a walk off. Seventh yeah. grade. <laughs> oh, my dad. <laughs> yeah, you didn't play me ever uh, since. That's crazy. Well, I, I had a 17 year uh, winning streak uh, against my son Andrew in bowling. Okay. And, uh, and, it was so humiliating for him when I would bring it up. It didn't mean anything to me because it was, you know, it's bowling for one. <laughs> but just the fact that it was 17 years. And then came the day when no. I was just off a little bit. And I wasn't even good. And he won. And you'd have thought uh, he was stating <laughs> the fire all over again. Have you gone back since or did he walk off? No, we've gone back. Oh, good. Thank we've gone goodness. back. But uh, your dad played it smart. <laughs> I know. Because I knew I could beat him. <laughs> and your dad's like, I'm good. Yeah. We're walking it off. It's terrible. All right, who's the sorest loser? Uh, Who do you think it is, Blaine? Who do you think is the sorest loser for the Haas group? TJ. Yeah, I think it's TJ. <laughs> because because I... <laughs> what does I that know. say about me, no, guys? No, here's, here's what I'm saying. Fiery competitor. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying that... Uh, <laughs> no, and here's the thing, though. I know Marty well, because we, uh-huh. you know, I, I, I've covered all of you, and I was here when Marty was here, but... Um, 
they're all do not like to lose. You guys all don't like to lose. Tyler probably doesn't like to lose just as bad as you, but Tyler kind of keeps it all in. So I would say we would notice it in TJ the most. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would say it's a three-way tie. They all hate to lose. Yeah, you're probably right. There, there are many times. I mean, you, you got me thinking way back, but my dad and I, we used to we used to lower the hoop outside, and we'd play one-on-one. -on -one. And I would run in the house. This was like fifth, sixth, seventh grade, whatever. I'd run in the house just like so mad, like <laughs> – you know, mom, like dad's Your the worst, mom. you know, Your like <laughs> he's cheating, he's fouling, he's not giving me any calls, awesome. whatever. And so we had some, yeah, it is probably me. That's for sure. That's, right. It's all good. That's all good. Who's the most likely to buy the other two a hamburger? My dad. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Marty's he's always, he's, he's always he's taking sure. care yeah, of us. Yeah, he right. is. Blaine's going to hit you up with five uh, much more intriguing questions than these, but what's more challenging playing the game? Or analyzing the game on live TV? Uh, it's probably more challenging to analyze. Because when you're in the middle of the game, it's like a lot of it, you're just going. It's like second nature a little bit. I mean, you are analyzing when you're out on the floor. It's like, okay, they're playing like this. And this guy's feeling it. We need to make sure that, you know, as, as a point guard, that's kind of what you're doing. You're making sure that everybody's feeling good. Everybody's, you know, on the same page. And, um analyzing it's it's a lot of fun to see the game from a different perspective watching it um it's hard to watch as a fan you know because right. so much of it is like man i rewind that i want to see how they ran that i want to see how they got that open shot uh it's it's rarely just you know like oh sweet yeah like we're rolling or whatever you know you're like thinking so much uh you know differently you know on like a coach's side a little bit watching how they how they get things done and when you're playing you don't have a thing jammed in your ear with someone right. talking to and you so, uh -huh. and that's the weird thing <laughs> Somebody's talking to you the whole time you're trying to talk. You're like in the middle of a thought, and somebody says, "Hey, after this, do this." I know thinking, exactly. Did, what, did he just? <laughs> yeah, you want to say answer back, but you can't. But you, you lose your train of thought a little yeah. bit sometimes. So, you know, that's great stuff. Hey, uh, your wife Lauren's due any day now. Yeah, so we had our. She had our our third baby. Oh, you did, did she have, have it. Mm -hmm. When did you yeah. have it? Uh, February seventh. So oh. fifteen fifteen days early. So oh yeah, because because we had heard she wasn't due till right now, and I'm, yeah. I was thinking, we were saying. Is he going to be able to come on the show? <laughs> so you're like, oh, you got a two, two weeks in the rearview mirror. Yeah. How's it going then? It's great. Yeah, Lucas. Lucas J. Lucas, Lucas J. J. Um, yeah, so we have a boy and a girl. How come that wasn't boy. all over social media? I don't know. I... I at least I haven't really posted on any of my stuff for a long time. I'm pretty. So you're living your life in private. It's all yeah, good. but uh, he's he's a great little baby, and um, you know, both mom and baby are doing great. Um, it was a great experience, and uh, he's he's awesome. He's he's been a great. Are addition. you taking any shifts at night yet? Uh, a little bit, but it's it's more my wife. She's she's taking control and she's doing a great job. We guys you know, are limited in what they can do. I know. There's only so much you can do. She's kind. She's like, yeah. What what are you gonna do? There's not much. Um, <laughs> Turn the so. TV on. I know yeah. exactly. Well, Brenda used to say, "You can go get the baby and bring it over here to me." I was like, "Oh crap." Okay. <laughs> how is having these two kids? Uh, you know, you're gonna teach them how to play basketball and whatever else they want to do. But but now that your perspectives tweak because you've got. You got two in the house you're responsible for, mm -hmm. um, that you and your wife are responsible for. But what, how's it tweaked your perspective on, on what matters? Yeah, I mean, I, I really just, having kids, it changes your whole perspective on everything. And I, people ask me that all the time, like, do you, are you going to push basketball? Are you going to want, you know, Tyson to be a basketball player, or Lucas to be a basketball player, or even MJ to be a basketball player? And I... I really don't care what they do. If if they want to play basketball, it'd be super fun uh, to you know to be able to be a part of their journey in, in hoops. But I just want them to be passionate about whatever they want to be passionate about. I want them to be good good people, and I want to raise them in a way that they you know add to society and they uh, know what's important in life. Those things are really important to me because you know as I've, as I've gotten older, it's, you know, you, you start to see what you're grateful for that your parents did for you, um, after be, becoming a parent and some of the stuff that you don't really realize, you know, that your dad or mom did when you're growing up and you become a parent and you're like, Holy cow, you did all that for me. And I don't, it's, it's, it's sad that it takes you becoming a parent to see all that stuff. Um, but really I hope I can be like my parents and my dad, you know, he was to me and, 
my dad never pushed basketball on me, but once I told him, look, I want to do this, he was like, all right, we're going to do this together. And I think if I would have told him I'm going to be a golfer, I'm going to play tennis or whatever, he'd be like, we're going to do this and he's going to figure it out. And, um, so that, that's what I hope to be for my kids and whatever they want to do. I I want to be all in on it and help them. And if it's hoops, great. If it's not, you know, I, I want to be all in on it. You know what I'm hearing in that answer? That when you're in the backyard playing against your kids, you'll be cheap shotting just like your father <laughs> yeah. cheap shotting you. For sure, you. I'm the same way. I'm like, <laughs> you're not being and, me. And by the way, you just you just you just described what we all call the great payback, and that is the time when your kids have kids, and they actually come to you and say, "Dad, I'd never realized like you were right about this, and you're right about that," and then you go, "Oh." <laughs> Like I, I was hoping someday he might realize that, right? Yeah. It's the great payback, but totally. it, but it's not until you have grandkids that you actually get it. Nah, yeah, because it's agree. hard to see it when you're in it as mm-hmm. the, as the kid. But yep. So so you're you're well into into that, and you'll just have to wait to have grandkids to get the payback. <laughs> Keep doing great stuff. So hey, we have five questions uh, before we get to these five, um, and then we'll get you out of here. But thanks for coming. Of course, yeah. Thank you for having here. me. Guys. We look forward to having you back again. Um, does this basketball team? Uh, remind you of your basketball team that COVID took away when you're talking about being able to shoot, having an inside game, and having a lot of momentum like this team does at this time of year. Do you see similarities between what you had and what this group is? Totally. Yep. I was just talking to Jake Toulson about the other day, and um, this this team shoots the ball you know, extremely well and they get a lot of shots off and that feels very similar to what we mm-hmm. had. You know, we, we really, we had guys, you know, you could go down the list and everybody could shoot the three and that's what made us really hard to guard. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes this team really hard to guard. Cause uh, you know, one guy cuts and they, they do so well of moving off the ball that it just opens up shooters all over the place and everyone can shoot and everyone trusts each other, which is really special that, you know, coming from a player's perspective watching this team it's really special to see just how much these guys trust in each other because there are times where someone shoots you know an ill-advised shot or whatever but watching this team you don't you don't see a lot of oh man and nobody gives them a weird look it's like all right let's go yeah like we'll move on to the next play and just coming from a player's perspective and playing on so many teams like it's really special to see that. And I feel like we had that on our team too, where it was like, yeah, he, he might've shot that shot. I've shot shots like that. And he makes some of those shots, you know, and there's, there, there's similarities there too, but it, it just feels like all these guys trusting each other. And that was the same feeling with, awesome. with that team as well. Well, that's what it takes that, that kind of trust and that kind of talent to win tournament time. Everything, fun. everything you've done athletically has led up to what's about to happen. Yeah, Are these five ready? questions. You're not allowed to think about them. Just answer. <laughs> oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> so, your favorite sports movie? My favorite sports movie. Mm-hmm. Um, remember the Titans. There we go. Classic. What was Tyler's? I don't know. It might have been remember. that. Might have been that. It's a great one. Might have been yeah. a basketball it's a, movie. It's a great I'm one. Sure. A lot of us pick Hoosiers. Yeah, a lot, Hoosiers. Lot, 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 lot of Hoosiers. Somebody just brought Sandlot up the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. That's a great That's one. one. Yeah. The Sandlot. More more funny than inspiring. Yeah, yeah exactly. We learned a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. I remember the Titans. is That's phenomenal. Mine, yeah. too, by the way. Favorite singer or band? Uh, Morgan Wallen. Oh, so you're a country guy. Yeah, I'm kind of all over the place, but I would say he's, like, my most consistent. I feel like I can listen to him in summer and winter and... So, so pre, pre-game, getting in game mode, who would you listen to then? I didn't really listen to music pre-game. I, I was never, you know, I, I tried to stay as loose as I could before games, and I was kind of just chopping it up with the guys and just trying to keep my mind not stressed in the corner tight, you know, yeah. trying to just be loose. Nice. Morgan Keith, Wallen. I like Morgan Wallen. Keith Urban's got some new stuff out. You should check that out. Okay, he's, I was. He's big, You're he's a Keith, Keith Urban Keith guy? Urban. Yeah. Yeah, well, and his, his buddy writes songs for Keith Urban and – so Dave and I got to go sit in some phenomenal seats at Keith's concert wow. in Vegas. So we that's know some guys cool. on the end. Yeah, then, that's and sweet. Then, <laughs> then we're both friends with Brad Paisley's dad, so that's not too bad. Either so you guys are in. Down. Yeah, we're you guys in. are in that world. We're in the, yeah. those two worlds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just those two. Those yeah, two. That's so. fantastic. Okay, your favorite breakfast cereal. My favorite breakfast cereal. Um, I've. I've kind of I've kind of gone away from breakfast. I'm like a just a granola guy. I've I've like I've 
you know, he's, he's, kind starting of gone, to, he's starting to sound like Kyle Van Noy. I have kind of gone through this like health journey and I, I feel like there's a lot of garbage in some cereals, you know, so I've, I've gone to, I've kind of just have this granola that I go to. I don't even know. Okay. Love crunch or something like that. That's, so, but, so we're just going to say granola. Kyle Van Noy told us that he won't give his kids breakfast cereal that they have to have protein smoothies in the morning. <laughs> I'll be honest though, we've done this show for two years now. Uh, I don't I don't know if we've had granola, granola? on the show on the list. That's great. Let, so there's gotta on. be a first for Let everything. It be written, granola. It's on the I'll list. send you guys uh, I you know, some of my some of my What's stuff. What's it called? Okay. I think it's called Love Crunch. Love Crunch. I'm gonna yeah, look for Love Crunch. Dark chocolate in there and strawberries and I and like Cap'n Crunch. And I'm not it's a little lie, bit different I, I than Cap'n Crunch. I don't eat cereal for breakfast anymore either. Mm -hmm. But I do eat it before the show every week. I, I just so what you have today? I just had Cinnamon Life before I came. That's my most common. Cinnamon so, Life growing up was probably my, yeah. uh, my so favorite. I, so I had that before I came over. That's my pregame meal. Um, as David can attest, if I eat something that doesn't agree with me, like... We have a whole rule about what I'm allowed to eat before games and stuff. <laughs> it's involved, but but, but I, I have I have a protein shake um, and uh, a pre workout drink, and I work out early in the morning. I don't eat breakfast, so okay. So your favorite BYU moment you you kind of you, you kind of gave us one, but this doesn't have to be on the basketball floor. This can be anything, and it may be on the basketball floor. Is you just think back on your BYU experience? Was there, was there a moment in time or something that happened that? that was just great for you yeah um i feel like i have a lot um on the floor was was probably you know there was three special ones that my senior year when we beat gonzaga at oh, home on senior that night that was special for all of us i don't think i don't think there will ever be a senior night ever that is like that yeah <laughs> ever again no on any like with any team in the country like i just think it was, it was magic. I, I think it was yeah it's magic that's the right word um and that was that was a really special fun game um when we beat saint mary's and going to have our son after that was mm. was really special that was kind of like a combo yeah a combo and and beating houston was a combo um so you know th those those three on the court and i guess that saint mary's one off the floor was kind of those were all really special memories for me. Very, very cool. Okay, this is a hard one because I don't know if there's m many of these, but favorite piece of advice that Tyler ever gave you? Um, I, I think for me growing up, it was more how Ty led by example than anything he ever told me. Um, Ty was somebody that didn't always have the most natural ability in basketball but he was somebody that in summers I would watch him just get up early, go shoot, come back, rest for a little bit, lift, go shoot again. Like he was consistently in the gym and to watch him and just his hard work and see where it took him. That was something as a little brother, you know, I'm looking up to him going, man, that's, that's how it's done. And to, to have that example, I think is, is really a special thing. And, uh, you know, not everyone has that. And it was just, it was really just cool for me to see his hard work. And he's, you know, I say it to this day, like he's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. And just, he's just, he's really good at being bored, doing the same stuff over and over and over and over again. And that's what made him really successful. And so I think above all, that was, that was the biggest thing he did for me was just lead by example. And this is how it's done, TJ. And, you know, do the same thing. You're in your basketball world when Jimmer's Jimmer mania, mm -hmm. lighten it up and breaks Danny Ainge's scoring record. Now he's number one. And then here comes your brother. Um, did you ever think that, that he would beat Jimmer's scoring record and the night that he did, what did that mean to you? I was on my mission when he did. Oh wow. So I, I wasn't actually I didn't actually get to witness it. Um but yeah, I, I think Ty's you know, what he's really good at is he's so consistent and Ty was never like 
I mean, Jimmer, it was like all over the place, you know, like it was, 50 it was points. And four, yeah, it it's like, and it was so fun. But Ty was just like 20, 20, 20, 20, Every 20, night. 20. And, you know, when it was 28 or 30, it was just like a quiet 30. Like somehow he got to the line eight times and yeah. he had, you know, six fast break layups and six mid range pull ups. And he was just, he just did his job. And um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it was something that if he could really keep going and be consistent like this, you knew it it could happen eventually which is pretty amazing to like the lesson that you're teaching us tonight is the guy that was relentless with his work ethic showed up every night and was consistent ends up being the all-time leading scorer in byu history it was it was a combination of work and consistency and and nothing and, really and, flashy and it honestly. wasn't flash yeah. and he stayed healthy and he played as a freshman yep right. is it, but helped. isn't part of staying healthy the relentless work ethic that went in where he was so unbelievably physically sound always in totally. phenomenal shape, never got out of shape. Totally. I know. I, I remember him talking to me about, you know, just cause you know, I was in high school, he's at BYU and he'd, he'd be like, yeah, we ran today. They had us going and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going through the same thing. Quincy had us, you know, <laughs> yeah. doing all sorts of stuff yeah. too. And so I'm like, Oh man, how was it? Like you doing all right. And he's like, yeah, I got to the end. I'm like, well, let's go keep going what do you got for me and that's just how tyler always was it was yeah. like you can't really wear me out and you know he and showed I, that i kind of feel like that's a haas trait though is that not because I, I i've known your dad for a long long time and i feel like that's the way he always has been as we watched you play that's the way you were you were relentless like your work ethic like it, it mirrored ty's work ethic on the floor nobody could wear you out on the floor did that start with your dad's example for both you and like, why is that so ingrained in the Haas family? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think definitely my dad said, you know, this is, if you guys want to do this, this is what it's going to take. And so there's, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's something that, yeah, it's, it's year after year doing the same thing and making sure that your body's ready for this stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I felt like at BYU, I was in, I was in great shape and felt like I could go and, um, and really to, to play and play for a while and play high minutes, you have to be in that type of shape. And uh, so, yeah, Look, I don't know. nobody, nobody shows up and plays their first game and then plays the next 132. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, and that and and that wasn't all me. You know, I had so many people in my corner that were that were extremely helpful in making that happen. You know, Rob Ramos, Coach Short, sure. all those guys that uh, are just making sure you're you're healthy. And uh, it, it it takes a it takes a lot, and it takes a lot of people, and you have to be fortunate as well. My first year playing pro, I tore my hamstring. And oh. so, you know, it's like, you know, and I, I played every game in high school too. Right. So I, I was I, like, I feel like I hadn't missed a game in a really long time and I start getting paid and tear my hamstring, you know, it's like, it's super unfortunate. So you have to be grateful. You know, that taught me a valuable lesson too. You have to be grateful every time you step on the floor because it is a blessing and it can be taken away at any time. Um, so I, looking back, you know, I was very fortunate. I had a lot of great people in my corner that helped me um, stay out on the floor like I did. Uh, so it definitely was not just me. You know, we, we started out before you were here. We were previewing that you were going to be on the show. And I and I told everybody the story that I told you um, like early this season when I yeah. came to talk to you about yep. how every single coach we talked to and we said, what's the game plan? And they said, well, the first thing is we got to figure out how to stay in front of TJ Haas. Like it's impossible to stay in front of him. Um, he's going to break down our defense. We're going to get into rotations. He's going to find guys. He's going to score. He's going to get to the line. So we have to stop TJ Haas. That's what they started with. Everyone. It wasn't, hey, we got to stop Yolda. Like that came. That was part of it, but yeah. it always started with that. What's that like to know that that you are in command out there, <laughs> that you can get by anybody you want to get by? What's that feeling like to know that? Yeah, well, it, I mean, a lot of it helps when you have great shooters around you and great players around you because that helps space everything out. That allows you to to kind of you know be able to play your game a little bit. Um, my dad always said that the best the best point guards, the best basketball players 
can get where they want on the floor when they want. And we always talk about getting two feet in the paint, and that was always a big deal. And if you can get two feet in the paint, good things are going to happen, whether it's a basket to get the line or, you know, finding somebody for an open shot. Um, one of the things I always prided myself on was like really making the right basketball play. And, uh, you know, guys like Yoli and guys like Jake and, uh, those types of guys allow you to make the right play. It's like, if you're going to help here, Jake's going to make an open shot. If you're going to help here, Yoli's going to get a dunk, whatever. If you're not going to help, I feel like I can shoot this thing. And so, um, though, th having those type of people around you helps with that as well. But that, that's always one thing that I felt like I did was, you know, I feel like I can make the right play, whatever that is. If you're going to help or if you're going to stay off, I feel like I, you know, can make the right play. This, this team, you, you mentioned earlier in your predictions, BYU's going to play Houston in the semis. They're going to play Iowa State in the championship game. Those are two top defensive teams in the country, and they like to take those guards and go out there, and they're going to pressure Dallin Hall out there. Mm -hmm. and they're going to, they're going to pr whoever's in that game handling the ball is going to feel pressure. BYU has multiple guys. What advice would you give to those guys? How do you handle that kind of pressure with these teams with this much talent and that much quickness covering you 30 feet away from the basket? Yeah. I, like For me, when, when guys would do that, it's like, I'm going to make you work all night. And I'm like, if you want to pick me up and you want to do all this, like, let's go because I'm going to make you work. And you really have to – what these what these guards do a really great job of is they just – they dictate the – the pace of the game you know they 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 push you to do things that you're not comfortable doing and if you can make sure that it's like okay if, if you want to play me up super high this is what this team does really well if you want to play me up super high and do all this i'm just going to get off the ball and i'm going to move and you're going to have to defend me and i think sometimes when guys bring a lot of pressure on you guys want to show like look i can i can handle the ball like i can i can get by you and all that stuff and i don't care about that stuff I don't, I don't care about showing you that I can cross you over or do any of that stuff. I'm going to make you work. And can you be up and have lots of pressure? And then I get off the ball and I'm going to cut hard. And can you still guard me? And I'm going to come off another screen and I'm just going to make you work. Um, and so with, with guards that, that give a lot of pressure, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to get involved with that. I'm just going to make you work all night and I'm going to make you respect that. If you're going to overplay me, I will be cutting back door. Like I'm going to make you work. Love Fighting that. words. Those I are love tournament that. Words Make right them there. work. Make <laughs> Houston and words. Iowa State work. Well, let's focus on Texas Tech first. <laughs> Actually, Central Florida. Yeah. And then yeah, Texas let's, let's but win. when we get to those others, let's make them work. I love it. Great yeah. advice. It's awesome. hard, hard to imagine BYU basketball uh, as it is today without the Haas brothers and the Haas father. Um, and uh, and that certainly means T.J. Haas, uh, number seven all-time in scoring. So many categories, made contributions, but you're first class the whole time, and like your brother and like your dad, but uh, but you're on the show tonight, so the spotlight's on you. So yeah. thank um, you so much for coming in. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks yeah, so much, T.J. I appreciate Love you Love having you in. And by the way, uh, when the tournament's over, we wrote down all your picks. Yeah. We'll revisit them. There we go. We'll see. <laughs> Come on. I hope hey, I'm We, we were only one <laughs> different, and you, uh, you had Kansas State in that one, and – and and I didn't, but that's who did I have over Kansas State? Texas. Outside yeah. of that, we're we're all yeah. yeah we're, we're Come there. on, I'm excited. This is going to be a fun week. It's a it's great really week. Fun. It's let, the best time of year. Let Lauren know. Uh, we apologize yeah. for keeping you a little longer. <laughs> yeah, and and then uh, we, and we, great. we were talking to Tyler a few weeks ago, and we're like, oh, that's right, we're going to have a baby. We didn't realize you are you had it two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. That's great news. So that's awesome news and glad that everything's going well. No, so give our love to the whole family. Thank so, you. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, okay. TJ. You're out of here. Kay. TJ Haas.